Okay. Well, thank you for coming here and spending an hour with us. Uh, it's great to see you yeah. all. It's great to be here at Emory. I've been here before, but it gets just greater for every time I'm here. And um, also bringing my colleague here, Lurika. It's been very First nice. Mm -hmm. um, well, just as an introduction, I'm an um, associate professor in social welfare law, or officially public law, actually, uh, which is quite a, a broad area in Sweden as a lot of our system is centralized, right? So public law is, is quite a broad area in Sweden, maybe broader than in the States. I, I don't know. That's an interesting question, actually. Um, and uh, this is in Lund. And to say something about Lund University and Lund Law School having this uh, uh, competitor in Uppsala, uh, <laughs> we, I think we would say now, uh, at least in the, in, the, in the last ranking system, that we are the best uh, law school in Sweden. And uh, we are actually, the, 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 it's toughest to get in for students. It was actually this year the toughest program to get into in the whole uh, University of Lund, which is quite unique, a medical school being difficult. And, uh, so, so we're very proud of this. And um, well, why is that? Well, I guess we do have quite a lot of things going on at the university and um, quite a, a big expansion. Uh, on professors and, and also research areas. So it's a very nice time to be at the law school working there. And um, the law school is not only isolated. It's a quite a large university. And uh, as we mentioned here before, the law and sociology or, 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 or law and society, yeah, it's, um, it's the only department of that in Sweden. It's, it's the one in Lund. So we have quite a close connection yeah. with them. Uh, and uh, also we have the Ralph Wallenberg Institute, uh, which it's almost a part of, of the law school. And uh, it's a very h highly rated institute for human rights issues. And, and I think international pretty well renowned uh, for its, its work. Uh, so, so we're very proud of, of, of that too. And then we have the well, gender studies uh, yeah. department, which is uh, yeah, quite which is also it's quite um, uh, It's getting larger. Uh, we have some connection or uh, collaboration with uh, the Gender Studies Department um, since some five, ten years or so. And actually, their uh, undergraduate program's uh, profile is in law, actually. And uh, I was there developing this law semester, which they are very proud of, um, telling um, everyone in Sweden you should go to Lund to, to have this. Um, possibility to study law and gender at the gender studies department. But also uh, their profile in general, research profile in gender studies uh, is actually in queer theory. I don't know if you heard of Bina Rosenberg. She's, she's quite famous, at least in, in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, and both Chichi and I um, did some uh, research and teaching at the gender studies department and um, we have some continuous collaboration with them. Yeah, what else should we say? And I'm in criminal law, I didn't say that. Uh, and I did some research on uh, sexual offenses, sexuality, um, trafficking, and um, yeah, law and gender. Yeah, yeah. Th there's been a, a collaboration between me and Enrique the last uh, years. And um, we have kind of developed in some common kind of environment, or whatever you would call it, in, in, in public law in broad sense including criminal law and social law. And it, it's been very exciting. Uh, there are a lot of issues that are actually very relevant. Hello there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> being, um, at least being interested in issues that are closely related to what Professor Martha Feynman here has been working on for many years, the vulnerability issues, which uh, we are quite interested in. And I've been in child law, writing books about foster care <coughs> and institutional care for youth, and also about um, family law related areas like uh, guardianship for foster children, or permanency planning questions, adoption issues. Quite unusual in Sweden, but it's coming up and an and, and issue. And now lately we've been working on uh, youth issues uh, having to do with gangs, youth gangs. 
that's actually the project we're working on now. Oh, okay. But th th there's a lot of issues that are quite interesting uh, having to do with both in, in public law related field. And at least two, I would say, in my area uh, or in our area, well, one is privatization. Uh, Sweden being a heavily centralized country, actually, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rapid development. In the beginning of uh, the um, like 1900s, we were the, one of the poorest countries in Europe, really extremely poor. And um, I have stories from my grandparents. Uh, they, they asked me, and also my father actually was a f f from a farming uh, family. And when he was young, he was he, he was always hungry. It was all just on Christmas that he co could eat as much as he wanted. So this is a very recent development. You should remember that. Uh, but after the World War II, we kind of developed very rapidly in Sweden and suddenly became one of the richest countries, countries in, in Europe. Um, very interesting development. Much, a, a lot of people would say, uh, because we got this social democratic um, government that kind of built what we in Sweden would call the Swedish folk home. Uh, kind of same for all. Uh, <laughs> Did you hear Yeah, that? Yeah, yes. the, the Swedish folk home. Mm. It's, it's, all Swedes would know what that is. Um, and there's a lot of pictures kind of characterizing this uh, well happy family not too happy not too sad <laughs> it's kind of we have a swedish word called lagom and lagom is um was not too much of it it's kind of in the middle which is very swedish you're not supposed to have two extreme opinions you're going to be a little in between kind of and it, it kind of it mirrors our it's a reflection of our kind of homogenous society it's getting less homogenous but it's it has been extremely marginous. And this, this centralization and the publicly kind of distribution of wealth or whatever you will call it and was going on until the 80s, uh, pretty uncriticized. And then came slowly like a globalization and a Europe, uh, Europeanization, could you say that? Um, EU and um, also kind of maybe also a different ideology kind of why shouldn't we also be able to get very rich or do extremely different things and <laughs> why should we? And, and it was also more politically, I think, getting more on the right side than before. Yeah. And I, I, I'm sure historians would, would also give other answers, but I think that would pretty much kind of sum up uh, what happened. And uh, in, in the... The last 10 years, it's been a very rapid change in the Swedish society, and we have had a, a heavy um, privatization on, in areas that, for a Swede, is a very, it's very kind of a, a state thing. One example will be the privatization of the pharmacies. Um, Sweden was one of the few countries in the world who had a private, a centralized um, pharmacy system. You were not allowed to have any private pharmacies. This had changed in 2009. We got a new regulation opening up for 50 percent, approximately. That's how the regula regulation looks today. Making privatized the 50 percent and also making it a possibility to start new pharmacies. So now we have all these new pharmacies in Sweden with names we never heard of. We, <laughs> we always have known how they look like and now they're like, whoa, that's a pharmacy there. It's, it's very different. They are regulated by a national agency. You have to have a license. And you have to have a, uh, it's a regulated ownership. You have to have certain competence, pharmacists and other people working at the pharmacies. That was not completely unregulated. Uh, but it is privatized. Um, and uh, it, 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 the reason why, well, a lot of the privatization is, is done because we think we get better prices. We think we get a higher variety, right? And, and um, we think it might get more efficient. 
some articles you write, <clears throat> reading, you write, read in the papers today say, well, it, it didn't get cheaper. Mm -hmm. And well, there are some people who can't get hold of their, their, their pharmacy products now because they're not kind of, there's no one wanting to sell them anymore. So there are some problems kind of showing up, but it takes time to really kind of review the system completely to see what it looks like. And, and that's, I would say, it's pretty much Sweden in a nutshell today with this privatization. We're pretty new on this thing, and we're looking into other country systems. It is development that is not stopping. It is continuing. Um, but we are kind of, it is kind of dividing, I think, uh, people. <clears throat> some people want to have it as it was before. And some people think, well, now we're just like everybody else in the world, and this is great. Uh, so, so it's kind of a political and ideological question, right? Uh, and then, of course, you can do evaluations in different perspectives, gender, economic, uh, other perspectives, and see well, what, what, what are the influences. And, and there, we're just in the beginning. The research is really uh, hasn't really come very far on these issues yet, I would say. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. <laughs> that being yeah. <laughs> and that, and that, uh, it, so I, I'm just wondering. I know you had mentioned that you were talking to some Japanese uh -huh. people about this, and I, mm -hmm. I know that the Japanese. One of the things that they did was to import a number of American legal scholars, law and economics in particular, but mm -hmm. not only that, mm -hmm. to come and talk to them about the privatization mm -hmm. 15 years ago. So uh -huh. is that the same? Uh, I mean, well, maybe you can just answer that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I have the complete answer no. on that, but, but um, I, at least there are um, a quite a hesitance of, of going the kind of the American way, I would yeah. say. Th there's no too. real wish to become as privatized as the American way. There are ways of, of kind of limiting this. Um, for example, we have a new regulation in elderly care saying that municipalities can distribute the responsibility the, the elderly care to private agencies but only if the client the person the elderly person wants him or herself and and they can never compete money wise they can only compete quality wise so there's all companies who wants to compete they can do it but only by quality they all get the same amount so you kind of try this different system of, of, of kind of, I don't know, balancing the privatization so it kind of doesn't overweight and, and gets uh, on the wrong side or whatever you would say. But I also think um, arguments for privatization is um, free freedom of choice for the individual. Mm -hmm. You should be able to, to pick your own uh, doctor or physiotherapist or whatever. And um, also, um, deficiencies in in the in the system. I mean, um, there has been a lot of critique critique towards uh, healthcare, and so this should be the solution. Would you agree? Privatization should be like something better. At least, at yeah. least, there has been an economic problem to kind of hold to 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 have a stable socialist uh, health and social service care. Um, has been extremely expensive, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and also, having high taxes, we are taxed very highly in Sweden. If you're a private person, we are one of the highly, uh, highest taxed uh, companies on the other hand, pay much less tax than you do companies in the States. So it's different. We get, co company gets kind of a good situation. They have to, right? Otherwise, they just leave the country. <laughs> because it's pretty high salaries. So you have to compensate them by taxes, lower taxes. But for private people, it's, it's approximately you all, we all pay 50% in taxes. If you're not very low income. If you're low income, you pay 30%. Um, 15, 20 years ago, you could pay up till 90% of your last, if you did some extra work, the marginal rate was up till 90%. It wasn't a very high incentive to work, right? 
if you get to tax 90%. So, so it didn't really kind of accumulate more, it didn't create any production. So, so I, th I, I, th I think that is uh, kind of, it's been one of the main issues also, is that you have a very expensive yeah. system. We try to make it cheaper, right? Mm. Efficiency, uh, uh, yeah. so in, in the whole. But in some areas, we are not, we are not, not private. We are, we are not willing to privatize. And one is criminal law. Yeah. So uh, you can see wh where, where we pri privatize in criminal law is more in relation to care and victim, victim related um, questions such as women crisis center or child centers or well, these kind of things. But in relation to the repressive power for example, prisons are all state prisons in Sweden. We wouldn't do that. I, I don't think. I don't think we will do that in. Well, I can't see <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> what about uh, I foster mean, care? Fo the foster care system has that been privatized at all? Depends on how you define yeah, foster care, it's right? Yeah. Semi-privatized. What, what would you say? Yeah. Well, but I think there is a, it is an interesting uh, gender uh, is, um, dimension there because. Um, care has traditionally been uh, uh, feminine, uh, associated with the feminine, and uh, the repressive power, the accused masculinity. So I think there is, an, you could you, you could find an, a gender dimension there. I think. Um, yeah. I was just going to change the subject to be honest, okay? about guns. You said that you have started to work on youth violence and guns. Well, not guns, but guns. Gangs. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, is, is that a response to a rising social problem or academic? What was the trigger for for a project? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Did you answer that? <laughs> uh, no, I think we. I think there there has been uh, a lot of discussion and attention uh, in relation to to gang violence and gang criminality, and. Um, among youth, particularly, so that was one reason why we why we chose it, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, also because w we find this um, um, how can I say it fusion between social law and criminal law, and this is an area where you where it's uh, really um, visible where we where we could <laughs> cooperate. We, we thought about that yesterday. We went to the class uh, in the. Um, Keeping uh, up with, with a lot of my class. Yeah, starting mm -hmm. conflict, yeah, conflict. And uh, uh, some youth offenders uh, were talking about their experience from, from your system. And we thought, we said afterwards, this is actually, this is the connection between, between our two fields, uh, juvenile justice. So, so that's one reason mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Could you just flesh that out a little bit more, that connection? And, and it might be helpful. Um, say some of what your responses were to the way what you saw unfolding in the American system. So it would help us to understand. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting to, yeah. uh, to, uh, to look at our system through uh, outside of Oz. It's definitely. Very definitely. So maybe could, what can know. we say? Um, because in s it seems to me, you know more, maybe to it seems to me that you have um, more, um, I wouldn't say, better in a, but you have a m more nuanced um, no not nuanced um, but you have a ho more ho wholer perspective on juvenile uh, issues but it's so much we have to split um, there's a, a clear line between social law and criminal law uh, but we're working on um, uh, connecting it in a way um, but I mean also, it's so um, fascinating, or um, how can I say it? Um, we, we react when we hear about your system that you put so young people in, in prison. We wouldn't do it. There is that. That's the that's the main, as the biggest difference, really. Mm. So we we talk about more like until people are eighteen or twenty one, we more talk about care, and after that. We talk about punishment. And so, so that's what would be care? What would be an example of care? Um, so what systems would you put in place? <coughs> we, 
we would have we would have one uh, sort of uh, reaction from society when people are between 15 and 18. Uh, how do you translate that? Well, it could be you, youth, youth care, youth. educational schools, uh, or uh, yeah, or all that kind of. Uh, that is not kind of at least in a, from from a state perspective, is 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 uh, it's it's supposed to be good for the person. <laughs> it's not supposed to punish <laughs> the person. Although but I guess it, like, like I guess a lot of youth can feel that they are punished. Mm. Yeah. Uh, although they, they, we are not supposed to actually uh, do that. That's also one 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 angle that we're trying to to. Um, focus in our project that we talk about care and punishment, but is, is it uh, really that b a big difference between care and punishment? So that's one, yeah. one uh, big issue in a project, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we focus and, and uh, so uh, on, on, the, on the surface it's, it's care or punishment, but when you look at uh, how youth uh, are treated within this, because they also in, the, the care is institution as well, so, so um, yeah. And, and maybe, that I, I also want to know what, what has changed that gives you, uh, and let me tell you what I'm talking about. Yeah. So for example, youth gangs in the United States are functioning part on uh, 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 criminal organizations that may use the youth to distribute drugs, all right? Mm. Mm. Um, and also potentially to carry out um, criminal activity, organized criminal activity, where the people who are carrying it out are not are potentially not punished. Um, and so, you know, it's a Hispanic population in Los Angeles. It's a it's it's gang related. That it's organized in some ways from the top down. It's mm -hmm. also organized from the bottom up. As the as the children feel disaffected and don't feel like they're cared for. Mm. Potentially, it can draw them then into the gang activity. They become the gang becomes its, its family. Mm. So, it's interesting to me to think about what 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 is changing in Sweden to take a, to take a new look at it, as opposed uh -huh. to uh, uh, thinking about gang activity in particular as a function of really different values, perhaps, mm -hmm. or uh, a different source of disaffection in the youth. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be helpful for me to know, is there a change going uh -huh. on and what's, what's perhaps causing that mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting question. It's also kind of an area where we, we haven't explored yet more than separately, uh, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's very true that there are interesting changes in society. And one being in family, I would say it's a very cha it's a very um, uh, changing family patterns going on. We have uh, the highest divorce rates in the world. Uh, we have a lot of families kind of breaking up uh, constantly. Um, but we have a lot of youth uh, that are not kind of growing up in one family. We have, still have a high uh, welfare. It's, it's not that you, we don't have any poor people in Sweden, pretty much, or, um, or, or and we don't. We don't have that kind of vulnerability as we would traditionally, as my father kind of grew up with. That doesn't exist in Sweden. We have a different vulnerability today. And you can see that um, in divorce cases, maybe someone don't want to have their, the, 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 no one wants to take care of the child. They both want to start a new families. That could happen. Or the teenage girl, that ends up with a new stepfather, and she can't take this new family reorganizing. Um, so, so that's one reason I, I think it's an interesting change. Very, uh, like quite a lot of research actually going on in our faculty about these changing family patterns in a in a labor law perspective, um, in in a in a family law perspective, in a social security law perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, it is interesting. Um, and I think Sweden is kind of looked upon in European Union also as an example of how, how is, this is rapidly changing the family patterns. Um, the, the other thing I was thinking about is um, it's also the, the, in, the, the increasing, we have an increased migration since uh, a few years back and we have kind of segregated areas which we have never had before <laughs> in Sweden. It hasn't really existed. Um, and so we, we have regional problems with youth uh, hanging around, maybe not as organized yet, although there are organizations, but not. It's kind of at the beginning, but but they do exist regionally, and um, as a consequence, we do have a um, at least some people would say a higher crime rate. At least there is a discussion going on. Do we have it? 
Some criminologists will say, well, we don't. We don't have a higher, criminal, a higher crime rate today than we have in the 70s. Uh, but, but people are not really uh, confident with that. And the, so that there's a discussion, do you feel safe on the streets? Which we wouldn't have had for 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And can you say a little bit more about the immigration? Because that was one question I was thinking about, mm -hmm. was that it has been a very homogenous society, or mm -hmm. I'm thinking. But is that another change that's happening? Is that an increase, increasing ethnic or racial diversity? Um, and I don't know much about where the migration is coming. I mean, I mm -hmm. can imagine. But mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the segregated areas. But also, how does that play out in the juvenile justice system? Because I think we have, you know, yeah. historically in the U.S., I mean, the my immigrants or, or and then minorities have mm -hmm. been, you know, uh, one might say targeted by the um, uh, criminal justice and juvenile justice system. Mm -hmm. So I, is, is that sound? Um, I, th I think uh, you could say it is a little bit like that. I mean, there there is. A lot of discussion going on at the moment. Uh, we have this new party called the Swedish Democrats. Uh, it's really anti-immigrating. Um, how do you say? Mm -hmm. Anti-immigration. Uh, yeah, yeah anti-immigration. It wasn't the headings. The, the whole of Europe issue. the day when yeah. they get into the. And they got into the yeah. parliament now mm -hmm. in September uh, for the first mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and and their main issue is to to stop immigration mainly, and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of their arguments is, of course, related to to uh, what you're hinting at, that mm -hmm. the, the immigrants um, commit more crimes. Mm -hmm. And also, in the statistics, you could see uh, that, that that's also what what is debated. I mean, you could see a little bit um, of high representation in some in some criminal among some crimes. And some you don't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is a, a lot of discussion going on about it. Yeah. And where is particularly the at the immigration from? Is it? Uh, mostly, I mean, in in the currently the a big debate is about immigrants from Iraq mm -hmm. and also Ethiopia, Somalia, mm -hmm. and what would you say? Yeah, Iraq and Iran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Somalia and Ethiopia, I think, uh, are the main. Areas at the moment. Does it? Ha I'm sorry. Does it have a, mm -hmm. a religious aspect to it? Also, is there fear generated about Muslims yeah, yeah. that really aren't ever going to yeah. participate in the society, or Muslims yeah. that want to uh, impose Sharia, or sending children back to you yeah. know? Is there that kind of uh, part of the discussion? A little bit, but yeah. but yeah. Uh, the Swedish Democrats are talking a lot about Muslims, mm -hmm. mm. and uh, you know that Muslim culture is destroying our society and. Yeah, like that. And I don't mean to be taking this off in a different direction, but no. is, is there um, birthright citizenship in, in Sweden? That is, do, how do, how would an immigrant become a citizen in Sweden, or can they? They can. They can. And and of, yeah, do you know more about that? In two ways, really, yeah. depending on the other uh, country, also where they come from. But if, if you uh, are born in Sweden, you automatically become a, a Swedish citizen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, also, if you come to Sweden, you can apply for citizenship. Mm -hmm. And depending on what the other country, kind of double uh, or, or not. But yeah, that, that's the way to do mm -hmm. it, pretty much. <laughs> we have had a very, I would say, a, at least a, a European standard, a very generous immigration policy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very yeah. generous. Yeah. So we're kind of uh, well known for that, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, but it's been kind of a tighter, tighter climate. I don't know if you can kind of, but, but it has to do also with, in the beginning of the 90s, we had a big financial crisis in Sweden. We actually went to the States. Our prime minister went to the States and said, please, can we lend money from you? And you had a lot of money in the beginning of the 90s, right? <laughs> so you say, OK, you can. And we, we like Sweden, and we got money from you. And, and, and I think that started something in Sweden. Doing that fun financial crisis is not good for for, for kind of yeah. vulnerable mm -hmm. vulnerable people, right? Uh, you get kind of another mm -hmm. perspective on things, mm -hmm. and it, it it has it gets um, well, it doesn't stop. It kind of uh, you know like a water you've thrown. This it kind of gets um, more. It, it goes on, and I, I think something happened then. 
Also, I think when the, the, the shooting of our Prime Minister, Olof Palme, was also something mm -hmm. that changed Sweden forever. We were kind of an Definitely. innocent country, and something happened that in 1986 uh, <laughs> that happened. Um, so, so around that time, something happened in Sweden. Mm. Mm -hmm. Immigration issue, but linking it back to, to what you were talking about earlier with the uh, decrease in social welfare mm -hmm. in the state. I was listening to an interesting researcher earlier this year who was saying that a high level of social welfare in states are often associated with uh, more homogenous populations. Uh -huh. It's much easier to justify. Uh, it, people are much more accepting of welfare if the people who receive the welfare look and sound and speak and act much as they do and so they can imagine themselves as or people like them meaning it but they become much more hostile to it when the people who don't look or act or speak much like themselves. That's very interesting. I, I would like to get a reference to that if you do have it. That's a very interesting. So I was, uh, and, and they were using Sweden mm -hmm. as an example saying mm -hmm. very much yeah. society with very really? high uh -huh. social welfare and as that begins to break down and people yeah. start to think people mm -hmm. on welfare are not people like me. Yeah. Um, so I wondered whether you had I, I think that's uh, yeah, so it's very interesting, very interesting. and I, I, I think that applies to a lot of areas actually, uh, uh, that it, uh, talking about foster children as we've been to some classes the other days, it, we, we kind of often say that, well, foster children, it's not our children, right? It's their children. So it's never been a big debate when foster children have uh, problems. It's never as problematic as when adopted children have problems in Sweden. We have. All, Almost all, 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 only inter international adoptions for well, uh, kind of wealthy families. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a big. So that's our children. So it's very debated when it comes to legal. Uh, should we change the law for adoptions? It's on the media. When it comes, should we change the law for foster children? There's not much written on that because mm -hmm. it's their children. It's not our. So that that's, would be kind of the parallel um, um, analysis. I think. Yeah, I think it's very much. The thing, actually. Mm -hmm. well, building off of that, what what children and youth are accessing the publicly funded care? Is it is it more likely to be children of migrant families? And I'm wondering how that next mm -hmm. how that connects in with the privatization of care as well, and the quality of care that's being received, mm -hmm. or the pers the uh, the, perce the perception of state responsibility for those children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is a higher rate of children from immigrant family and and lower, uh, would you say, under middle class families? Absolutely. Um, although the the most vulnerable family in Sweden, according to statistics, is the lonely mother. Uh, in in that, so so, uh, so 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 that's kind of. That's what, as a, like a, a well-known social work uh, professor says, if you, if you don't have anything to do with the social welfare office, please go and see how the lonely mothers have it. Because you're most likely to find problems there. Statistically, that's where the real problems are. They have less income. It's difficult to kind of arrange a whole family responsibility all by yourself. And uh, often turns out to be prob problematic for the children and for, for, for their lonely parent. Uh, but yes, um, that is, um, it, it is heavily uh, uh, certain groups, although of course it exists in, in, all, in all groups in society as drug problems, for example, uh, as you have the same. It, it can also happen to very wealthy families, right? You can get into drug problems or other problems in life where you can't handle your situation and, and, and the family needs help and so kind. The privatization, well, I, I would say, Randy, that foster care um, is in our way of defining it kind of privatized in the sense that it is a family like mine or yours that take um, this kind of mission uh, paid work, right? Mm -hmm. um, but often nowadays it's organizations that employ foster families and we haven't had that so much. So the social welfare office can go on the internet and find companies who kind of sell these services. And they have a bunch of family uh, foster homes. So in that sense, yes, it's becoming more, uh, more privatized. The most discussion has been in institutional care, actually, 
where 90% of the institutional care today is privatized. It's completely surprised to the government when this happened. No one could ever believe that 90% will be privatized in such a short time. But the county councils probably thought it was pretty good not having to do with it before they had to have these institutional cares. And now they didn't. They could just kind of buy the services, which was easier. So suddenly they're almost only privatized. And there have, there have been some problems. Yeah, there have been some problems. Some companies just don't do their thing as well in all fields. Yeah. 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 But because this is considered care, uh -huh. then we don't have to rely on the same state values or like equality and whatever. Is that, so is that? I think that could be a well. It, it is reg I, I, I think, or well, at least we, we talked about this. That there seemed to be a distinction that it's kind of easier to give away power to kind of the care area than it is to the punishment area. We are not willing to do that. Uh, but how do you define it, and in what perspective? Mm. And it, but there are attempts to regulate the care. I mean, to, is, are there attempts to yeah. not only licensing, but you mentioned pharmacies with a licensing. Yes, one. yes. So it's an attempt to kind of impose the um, collective values on the private care? That's, that's a very good description of it, yes. And it's, it's good you bring that up, because it's not co privatized in the way that, well, now when anyone can do as they like to. and mm -hmm. it, it is. I, well, I haven't compared. It would be interesting to co compare how privatization in American perspective yeah. would look at yeah. in this yeah. public area compared to regulation in Swedish right. area and compare it. It would be very interesting. I would love to do that uh, if anyone would, 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 would be interested really in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but but um, I, I would think that the Swedish regulation is pretty heavy. I wouldn't know, actually. S the state surprises me a lot of times, and uh, so, so I wouldn't know. But it, it, it's, it, it's interesting. Interesting, not just to see how whether it's privatized or not, but how it is. Right. How it is yeah. And actually, one area that, that, that is interesting is, is uh, that Sweden is, uh, at the same time as we're privatizing as never before, we are still, um, we are also at the cent same time centralizing like never before by e-government. Sweden is, in, at least in Europe, the most uh, uh, the most um, uh, we call specialized or, mo or coming to, to on the front line in e-government and e-services, and I'm in this big national project working on this field, um, and uh, we are really centralizing now, so all the people can get in and uh, see their system and and do services and actually apply for social welfare on the internet. Uh, in a way we haven't done before. Um, it's, it's a very new field, but it's a heavily um, put forward by the government. Mm. This, so this is kind of maybe a tension there, I don't know. Mark, I was thinking, we had heard that paper presentation the other day about um, bankruptcy and elder uh, institutions. Were, were you? Mm -hmm. I know, I missed oh, okay. that. Maybe we should make sure that it's... Yeah, no, mm -hmm. but I... But I, I was just thinking about that in terms of comparisons of privatized versus um, um, one of the, the features of the American system that folks are worried about is the, is the Ponzi scheme. Does that make sense? The notion that you, you bring in elder people in particular into uh, your elder care facility. They pay a flat fee believing that they will have guaranteed care for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Oh. The, the way it is a Ponzi scheme is it turns out that quote guarantee is by a private company. And if in fact, it depends on continual growth, new people coming to pay that flat fee because as people age, they go through their funds and they end up being treated in quote as if they're uh, pro bono or they're not, they're not, um, uh, uh, they're, they're not paying anymore. Their fund has run out and, uh, and so they are in a, a vulnerable position mm -hmm. there, and the institution may choose to go bankrupt. So what happens is, is that there's presumably is this problem that's coming in the United States as people age, 
that the institutions that have promised to take people's money and provide care will go bankrupt. And, and the, of course, if it's a private, <laughs> they could go bankrupt and mm -hmm. the people would be out on the streets and they would have lost, they would be unsecured creditors in our system and they would have lost all their services. Right. I would take it that one of the features of your system would be if, if it, you know, the question is if it's licensed or if it's being provided by the government, there isn't any privatization uh, or bankruptcy option. It, the government would just continue to, in mm -hmm. a sense, fund it and fund it from tax dollars. And I don't know if that's helpful, but that, that to me would be at least one way of looking at how it's different in mm -hmm. the elder care mm -hmm. end of things is that the vulnerability of that population is, is that they're treated just like any other unsecured creditor in an institution yeah. mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. opposed to a government-owned facility where that, that option just isn't going to be uh, 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 available. And this person who was making the presentation was making an argument not to use bankruptcy mm -hmm. as a way of, uh, of uh, dealing with that, that looming problem, but that what we do is we take a governmental role in that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's interesting mm -hmm. to me, when you say privatized, if the government was mm -hmm. still paying it, I think we would have a tendency to think right. it was it's still It's not privatized. Right. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you wouldn't say it's privatized then, if, if the government yeah. kind of runs it? Yeah, it's linked to the profit motive, too, mm -hmm. because uh -huh. you said that, um, when you said that everybody, the competition is about the quality of the care and mm -hmm. not about the, um, because everybody, yeah. the price is set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. so it's not profit. What, but of course, the problem is if you don't have bankruptcy and you know people want to save money, what they do is compete, but it's a competition to the bottom. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. yeah. And that's what's right. happened with a lot of the care homes for the mm -hmm. elderly mm -hmm. in this country is that it's abysmal care and people are, uh, you know, it's really horrible. You need these extra days and, and mm -hmm. the government doesn't mm -hmm. regulate the, the quality of the care and, and people are kind of abandoned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wouldn't happen in Sweden today in this quasi privatized system now. And, and, and it's very interesting to hear about this bankruptcy. And it kind of brings to my mind the discussion we were uh, at Michelle, uh, at this state, state and family class the other day. And there was a um, person working at the Supreme Court Commission. Oh, thank you, yeah, thank you, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> interpreting. <laughs> and she was saying that the kids in foster care, well, you could never like help them to give a driving license. You couldn't afford, they actually, f f because it could happen that you could get sued, right? It would get so if they hit on someone on the road, so they will never get a driving license on public funding. They couldn't afford that. And it was also other things you couldn't do. It was like, ex extremely interesting to hear that would never ha never happen in Sweden and actually we did have a recent case in a little town called Landskrona not that far away from from Lund that was a girl who had a lot of uh, psycho she was in a residential care she had a lot of problem um, from a terrible home situation she grew up sexually abused many years as a child and she came to residential care one of the uh, most difficult children to take care of they say at least they said that in court and it, at some time, they, they want, she was supposed to, she lived in residential care when she was like 15 or, or so, and she was supposed to spend her time with her mother. And during that time, um, she burned down a big supermarket, um, but just put it on fire. Uh, it, well, it became a, a case, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted money. <laughs> and well, the social welfare have to give them the money. The, the, the municipality. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But th that was well, who had to pay? Well, of course. They have the they have responsibility. The state has responsibility, right? So it comes down to the municipality at this point. So that would be kind of the same answer where well, they can get bankrupt but, but the elderly would would well they have to move maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but they wouldn't lose their their kind of their, their, their wealth or their, their they wouldn't become more vulnerable in any other sense that they have to move to some other place. So uh, with, with, we're about 10 to 15 years ahead of you if 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> So don't right. say that too quickly. <laughs> nah, right, right. I was always thinking that. <laughs> we were, uh, uh, again, we've, we've seen a real shrinkage of the state and a shrinkage of social welfare, and, and there mm -hmm. is a logic of these things that flow mm -hmm. along. That, uh -huh. um, the state yeah. starts paying for it, and then the state cuts out the bad times, and they hold, they say, well, mm -hmm. this is only reasonable that people pay something. What about as, as people have their retirement right. they're very wealthy? Why should the very wealthy be paid for by the state? Yeah, um, the same. And then, you know, to mm -hmm. improve the quality, why shouldn't some people be able to add to that money to improve mm -hmm. the quality? And it's a bit hard to argue against that. Why, you know, if the state puts in some money, we'll put in some money. If we want to have tennis courts as well when we're mm -hmm. in the 80s, why shouldn't we have tennis courts? Things like, why should the state pay for it? And right. then you start suddenly seeing the two track system mm -hmm. where, where mm -hmm. one is really much more what you call private, though often uh -huh. still with a good government subsidy, mm -hmm. which yeah. is then subsidising the wealthy. Mm. It, and it didn't take very long. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. Um, and while while you still have more protections than you have in this country, yeah. Yeah. Um, there and, and much more regulation than you mm -hmm. have in this country, mm -hmm. um, you still do see some issues of mm -hmm. bankruptcy, um, which again, it, you know, largely lead to people having to move. But there's somebody in their nineties. Sort of having to move and maybe having to, if you're in country Victoria or country Australia, that might mean having to move 200 miles. That's uh -huh. not, right. not necessarily trivial. Yeah, um, that's very so true. Mm -hmm. anyway, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I really see a point. <laughs> yeah, but you're right about the logic of it, mm -hmm. right? That that's the thing that that logic can get mm -hmm. in place, and then you know, where does it, it mm -hmm. doesn't stop, and you mm -hmm. can keep going. Too. Mm -hmm. And there's a group with a big incentive mm -hmm. where the people who are running these places have a big incentive because governments mm -hmm. never. Um, right. and, and they've, they've got an incentive to try and get more private money and keep things on here. Mm -hmm. Universities have gone this way par excellence. We have got public universities which are almost entirely privately funded now. Mm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. So the public uh, universities are privately funded? Well, the public uh -huh. universities charge... It's, it's a complicated scheme, actually, mm -hmm. but you, you, there are certain degrees that you get by... Um, you're charged... You, the, the student who undertakes the degree mm -hmm. co-pays with uh, but you only have to pay through the tax system later on as you get to a certain level of income, okay. which is not. Okay. But of course, you know, when I went through, it was sort of ten thousand dollars a year, thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars a year, um, and it, and then more and more people are supposed to pay up front, and so in the end, yeah. the government contribution, which the government says, well, why, you know, we can get away with paying less mm -hmm. and less, and mm -hmm. they're just expecting students to pay more and more, and because they still yeah. pay some. They call the education system seems it seems more complicated in Sweden, and, and and it seems like a problem in the states. We've been talking about that quite a lot here. Mm -hmm. in, in Sweden, it, it is always free. Uh, you can study for your whole life, mm -hmm. and it will be free the whole time. There are some restrictions. <laughs> you can't start the medical uh, after you're 60 or something. But <laughs> otherwise, you can you can you can do it for free the whole okay. time. And it's actually been an interesting thing. It, we are here. We were talk, we, and, and you brought that up, Ulrika. Mm -hmm. um, when we when you go to to like um, we just go to the to the hotel and you ask for could you help me with this or that or you go to the supermarket and you can sometimes think that a lot of these people don't seem so educated whereas in Sweden people are, are, are yeah right sorry <laughs> but people in in Sweden are quite highly educated in all different doesn't matter if you are a car mechanic or you can be you often highly educated. Um, I don't know if you agree on this, but first we thought that we were kind of, we just don't talk the language so well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and, but now we feel we're kind of spoiled in Sweden in that sense, because education is free, people are very educated. Mm -hmm. So we don't have uneducated people. Um, well, if you come Im immigrating to Sweden, it could be different, but if you're born in Sweden, you, you, you're kind of well skilled in that sense. Do, so when you say educated, do you mean college educated? So pretty much everybody is going to have a college education. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Not University everybody. degree. Yeah. Uh -huh. or, or or at least a college. Yeah. Mm hmm. And your and your um, public schools too are probably a lot better than many of ours are. Yeah, I, I so wouldn't that's know. That's another that. area that, that suffers from privatization mm -hmm. because the yeah. private schools pulled all the resources out of the mm -hmm. public schools. Yeah, and yeah. So uh -huh. what and used to be mm -hmm. used to be proud of a public education mm -hmm. system. Yeah. Right. Interesting. But that, that's actually another area where we are 
Mm -hmm. I can say semi privatized because we allow, we call it free schools, private schools, you could say. We love them, we love them now since 10 years, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Or what would you say? Well, yeah, not quite that much, I think. 10, 10, 15 years, we love them, we love them, but they are um, um, financed by the state. It's also heavily yeah. regulated. Mm -hmm. yeah. so but so also heavily regulated. Private. Yeah, was the private thing. Yeah. <laughs> That is interesting. <laughs> we think we're well, privatizing, no. and now we learn we're not. No. <laughs> that is really interesting. In in your in your view, we might not be privatized, but uh, <laughs> but the thing is, mm. there are different uh, orientation in the schools, like Montessori schools or um, Christian schools or whatever. You have to have the operation. Yeah, 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 the operation. So it's like charter yeah. schools, I'd imagine. But so but the, I was thinking about what you said because one argument against this, because it varies between diff different parties, the Western, the, the left, sorry, the left uh, parties that are against this, uh, and their argument is that it, it, it takes away all the resources mm -hmm. from the, the public schools. Mm -hmm. It also mm -hmm. takes away the, one of the key, well in our society, one of the key places where people who are different from each other have to deal with each other yeah. in a constructive day-to-day yeah. -day basis, and yeah. I think there are it's an important. sense of solidarity yeah. that yeah. Is ah. greatly diminished when mm -hmm. you can then organize children yeah. according to things like religion or yeah. you know whatever, how, however we're totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Although with such segregation in neighborhoods, that happens sort of by mm -hmm. neighborhood <gasps> anyway, Instead. even without mm -hmm. the schools. Well, and in part yeah. because of the private school. Like, I mean, yeah. Again, the same yeah. Thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm wondering I mean, how are the quality of the schools in these predominantly migrant or migrant descended neighborhoods? And another way to think about mm -hmm. the slippery slope of privatization is um, what has the conversation been about, been like in terms of not privatizing or privatizing the operations of the criminal system? Yeah. Um, and, I mean, because comparatively in the United States, it's, it's very privatized. Um, the, these private corporations are large funders for immigration policies against undocumented migrants. And mm. So, what's the conversation been there about not privatizing? Actually, I would say there, there, there hasn't been any discussion on it. None whatsoever. No. no. Yeah. It's not an issue. No, it's not an issue in Sweden. It would never do well, it in Sweden right now. And figuring out why it's not an issue. Yeah. That's, well. that's, that's really. Why is there? Is it because there's meaning and silence as to us. Yeah. 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 It is very interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm going back to I think the first yeah. half of your question, which yeah. is the school issue on, on the immigrant communities. Mm -hmm. um, has the, is there a difference in quality or? Yeah. I think I think we're getting there. Yeah, of course. Mm, yeah, we're so. getting there. It's kind of a slowly process, but yeah, as we get segregated, that there will come, become more problem in school. It's kind of a, you can't stop that. It, and a lot of good teachers, they they just don't want to be there anymore. They want to have children that don't have as much problems. So so I think it's. Uh, it, 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 you, you can't see it so much today, but I'm sure we're getting there, and there have yeah. been some discussions on this, in we, this issue. We even have this program on television called, uh, did you see it, class, class um, well, in the name of a class, class nine, and uh, it is like this, uh, you get super teachers to, to go into um, difficult areas <laughs> and work. Mark has seen this. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it, but I can yeah. have <laughs> yeah, yeah, the same thing, right. <laughs> did you see it? And and, yeah, and, and they go it. there and, and they you know they have like two or three months to, to get good grades for the for the kids and it's like, it's like the, that nanny program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we unfortunately have to vacate the room because there's a class coming in. But um, you're all, you're still here or through Friday. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. And, and you know if anyone wants to um, meet and talk, I'm sure you'd be glad, happy to con convene this. Please. And I'm very happy to report that you're interested in coming back. Perhaps as early as January, and mm -hmm. we were talking about continuing collaboration and doing things together, and even having a workshop next year. Yeah. So um, you know, so this is just the beginning of our relationship. We're happy for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm.